Oh, so let me get this straight. You thought I was finished, huh? You thought the VHS boy, he's been vacant for a while. He's never coming back. That's the last we've seen of him, Paul. That's the last we've seen of him. Mark my words. Mark my, mark my words, Paul. That's the last we've seen of the VHS boy. Wrong. Wrong. I've been at the business of watching more films <laughs> to review for your sake. It's all for you. I do it all for the fans. Kind of like Fred Durst did it all for getting a cookie or whatever he said. This week, it's Trancers 3. Which one? Which one is it? Is it one? Is it two? Four? I mean, are you listening to what I'm saying? I said three. Count them. One, two, three, you know, get it through your head. Jack Death is back on the clock, baby. Slumming around Los Angeles, 1992, just doing some sleazy per... And my wife and child are home. Anyway, and I wish you guys wouldn't interrupt. I was talking about Transfers 3, Jack Death, Time Waits for No Man. Actually, the name of the movie is Transfers 3, Death lives. Now that's cute. Do you see what they did there? Directed by C. Courtney Joyner. And I know you're all going, oh man, this is a C. Courtney Joyner joint? Dang, this is a C. Courtney Joyner. Man, I've seen all of his films. That one and that one. All those ones I can keep remembering. And in this installment, Jack Death slumming the streets of Los Angeles, like I was saying earlier. He's just doing some just some little house calls, you know? And lo and behold, Mr. Big Shark Man, Robat, Robat, and in Robot from the future, uh, comes, shows up in a convenience store and is like, I'm looking for Jack Death and I was just wondering if anyone has seen him. And when this bad guy tries to be, get, get, tries to shoot him with a gun, tries to shoot him with a shotgun, the Big Shark Robot Man kind of goes like, no, thank you, and throws him into a into a you know glass case or something. But then the owner of the shop knows where Jack Death is. He finds him. He drags his ass to the future, to the year twenty three fifty two or something like that. I didn't look it up, but it was what it was a twenty three something, hundreds of years in the future. Nothing has changed except Los Angeles looks more trashed than it is right now. And they're kind of like, Jack, we've got a situation on our hands, pal. And you're the only guy that can fix it. Are you up to the task? And he's like, let me guess. Some trancers are on the loose and y'all can't deal with it yourself. Sounds like a typical Monday to me or something like that. And so they send his ass, get this, cold open of the film. He goes into the future. Uh, first act, he goes back to the past to 2005. I can't even wrap my head around the sort of butterfly effect implications of this. But he's Jack Death. He's used to time travel. He does it all the time. You and me, not very often. Jack Death, he's doing it day in, day out. It's no problem for him. If you ask him if it's any problem for him, it's actually no problem at all. Time travel. So he goes back to 2005 and he says hello to his old gal, his old lady, Helen Hunt. Uh, Helen Hunt was in three of the Transfers movies. Can you believe that? And by the third one, she was done. She was like four, five, six, no thanks. By the way, speaking of dames, this thing is packed front to back with sexy broads. And now that's sort of coming the per from the perspective of C. Courtney Joyner, who wrote this thing as well as directed it. And he's kind of going, how many bodacious babes can I fill this thing with? And hey, what's the sl uh, smallest budget I can use for their costumes? to show some of that skin, you know, and just kind of really sleazy, gross, awful uh, depiction of women in this picture who are just throwing themselves at Jack Death left and right. But you can't blame him. He's got that white hair with the weird buzz haircut that they do with the top thing. He's got smokes constantly. He's got multiple guns. I mean, this guy can handle any problem. So I'd be throwing myself at him too. 
at old Tim Thomerson, and that's the actor, and you can and you can look that up, Tim Thomerson. Now, what kind of name is that? And so he's going to take care of these guys, this evil bad guy, and he's got glasses. He talks scary, and he's going. I'm gonna build myself some super soldiers who are trancers who can get <laughs> pumped up to do, to be more than human, you know, and beat up bad uh, bad guys in uh, in the battlefield, and that would of course be the good guys because in his context, him being the bad guy, he's going after what are bad guys to him, and that's actually good to us. That's actually sort of so you can sort of see what I did there. And Jack Death, well, the first thing we see from these guys is look at that spooky little guy. Now look at him. Now, would you want to encounter that disgusting man in a strip club of all places? And he's going ham in there. He starts a fight for absolutely no reason with a couple of cowboy conk, cowboy honkies. Just some cowpoke, podunk, you know, Marlboro man-ass brothers in there. Uh, and he's going, hey... Did you forget any, uh, uh, did, he's going, hey, did you, hey, did you, Mr. Cowboy, did you forget any of your, um, pigs back at the, uh, farm? Because I think you have some, uh, pig, uh, uh, poo-poo on your boots. And, the, and, the, and then, you know, Mr. Marlboro Man is like, um, excuse me, what did you, excuse me, I'm a little hard of hearing. What did you just say to me just now? And then madness ensues. So there's a little of that. There's a little of guys getting injected in the soldier place to become trancers. And trancers just a really strong guy who gets a scary face when he, or a strong lady who gets a scary lady face when they get strong, when they get grumpy, kind of like the Hulk, but not as interesting or big. And they look way worse in their face, but they have big scary muscles. So you can guess where this is headed. The big bad guy, and I don't remember his name, Jack Death is hunting him down in the year 2005, and Jack Death is going, hey, 2005, I think the real bad guy is a freaking George W. Bush, you know? So, uh, and what he does is that then he goes and finds him immediately, and like, this movie's 75 minutes long. Short, it might as well be an episode of TV. It's so short. On the box, they say it's 103 minutes. That would be one hour and 43 minutes. Er, lie. Maybe the entire tape with all the previews and the video zone at the end is 103 minutes, but you're not pulling a fast one over my eyes, full moon. So, you know, why don't you, more like a, more like new moon, because it's dark, or, I mean, and that doesn't really track, but. So he finds them. He finds the bad gay. They've got, they've got, and it sounds like I said bad gay, and that's not good. And that was just a sort of, you know, just a little flip of the tongue that came out the wrong way. And there's no hidden message in that at all. That's just what you call a Freudian slip, and probably it wasn't even that. And English is my second language, so don't worry about that, and don't look that up either. He finds the bad guy, and they have this, like, slow-motion shoot -em up fight that's like, there's a guy over there, bang, there's a guy over there, bang, and that happens about six or seven more times, and that's their idea of, a, of an action scene in a, in a low-budget movie from Full Moon Pictures Productions entertainment and he gets him he gets him just in time and jack himself even gets get this injected with a little bit of the trancer serum himself and he's going dang it i'm the guy who fights the trancers i better dog on his heck not dog on get one of these freaking become one of these freaking <laughs> things myself and he does he well he almost doesn't and then he doesn't and then the lady he's with uh does and he has to shoot her and he's like you know sayonara sweetheart uh and, th and i think that's from humphrey bogart so then he gets to the end and he f he kills all the bad guys he goes home with the shark robot guy he has to go before the council of elders classic move for an 80s and 90s movie going before the council of elders and it's like this guy just saved the whole entire world or universe or planet whichever one it is you know they didn't even see his heroism in action but then these bunch of fucking suits gotta come in here with their diplomacy and their bureaucracy and i'm going oy vey and they tell him congratulations jack uh we're making you the super guy of the universe or whatever so buckle up for your next mission pal and let me tell you this uh, you, you're not getting any vacation leave 
So then he goes off and he's partners with the shark guy and he goes off to his next adventure, which we'll all just have to see what happens in Transfers 4, except I'm actually not going to watch that one because I think they go to medieval times and they get on a horse or something. They take it to castles instead of in the future, and that's not interesting. Boring. Medieval bullshit. I don't want that sword and sorcery shit. So anyway, that's how Transfers 3 is, and, and uh, it's actually quite good. Uh, it's rated R, so make sure you're old enough to watch it and that you're allowed. And uh, for what it is, I actually liked it a lot. I actually liked it a lot. Uh, it's pretty fun.